Ready? All right, so I, so I have more than a handful of things. But first and foremost, you have a packet of information, and this is looking at 2018 through 2020, right? The approximate budget over those three years was kind of triple nickel, about $555,000. And you can see there on your list where the majority of that revenue came from to support that camping, the beach and gate fees, and importantly, the hotel tax, right? We get a, a disbursement from the hotel tax here in Carbon County of $150,000 a year. Now, a little bit of analysis of you know, what's the camping uh, situation. If you go to page two, you can see there's over 7,600 rentals that took place. That's individual campsites, group campsites, and the cabins. It does not include the pavilions, the three pavilions. Looking at it, you see about 72% of the rentals actually come from PA residents, right? And, and then if you look at the, uh, the following states below Pennsylvania, the New Jersey, New York, and Delaware, that's pretty much consistent with the tourism models. You know, who's coming to Carbon County to visit? And if you go down a little bit further, you see kind of an average revenue per year that comes in based upon simply uh, the rental. Now, you will see kind of 197 in 2020, what well, we did, but the numbers are down. But what happened was there was a fee increase uh, last year. Is that correct, Dave, that, that we instituted? So that made up for some of maybe the shortcomings in the revenue, because remember, we kind of cut back initially what we were having in the park, you know, because of COVID. If you go to the next page, right, that's a look at Pennsylvania, and specifically uh, uh, Carbon County. So again, 72% of the overall came out of Pennsylvania. Only 13% of our campers are actually at, from Carbon County. And this is all based on zip codes, right? Now, Lehigh and Jim Thorpe, they take the bulk of those. They're a little over 50% of the individuals who, mock, who use uh, Mock Chunk Lake Park. Now, there's a couple onesies and twosies that aren't on this uh, chart right here. But that makes up the preponderance of individuals from Carbon County uh, who are using a park. Remember, that for the camping sites, this is over a three-year period. You go to the next slide, and then you get a little bit of details of where people are camping. And Dave, is it correct, 104 individual sites, four group and 15 cabin? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I keep counting the numbers. It looks uh, good, right? What was that breakdown again? 104. 104 individuals, four group sites, and four. then 15 cabins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And those group sites are kind of unique because they're actually double sites. Right? There are actually two sites, like a C1 and a C2, is that correct? But the, yeah, the C group site C and D have yeah. three separate sites, right. and A and B have five separate yeah. sites. So. Yeah. so they're almost like clusters. Yep, and then yeah. we also use them as like overflow sites for holiday weekends. Yeah. Yep. And, and interesting, as you look at the data, and you can interpret it any way you want, you know, Carbon County residents tend to prefer the cabins for some crazy reason, you know? Um, and then lastly, on the last page, you kind of have a look at family and individual beach swim memberships. I didn't break this down by the number of people. If someone had just queried me and said, hey, what, what does it look like when it comes to memberships uh, for going to the beach and stuff like that? So just look at that at dollars there. And what's the so what about all this? Was well, we continue to look at balancing the budget and ensure the park is taking in revenue, you got to know where to look, where you could potentially squeeze out a few more dollars, and who you want to get a few more dollars out of. And I know Dave's going to talk about another area in which we're raising revenue uh, this year. I will say in regards to revenue, I spoke to uh, Carbon Chamber and Economic Development Corporation, who handles our hotel tax distribution, and I am advocating for another $50,000. Um, now, Marlon Kistner is also, who's at the CCEDC, going up to Pocono Mountain Visitors Bureau. You know, kind of, there's this, the hotel taxes work through PMVB, 
and CCEDC. So I am advocating for about another $50,000 in the budget. This year's budget is just over $700,000, which is on the books right now. And we'll see how that, that, that plays out. So again, that's a snapshot of analysis. After this summer, uh, bear in mind, we are going uh, for beach access and swimming. We are going to credit card, right? We're moving away as much as possible from cash. That's going to provide us the data to start looking at, you know, where are the people coming from who are using the beach? We know anecdotally the majority of them are coming from outside of Carbon County, right? You can go there any time and get that, that sense. But again, we want the data to show that. And then again, start looking at the revenue generation. Well, what is a fair uh, a price for the beach access? We did increase out of county rates last summer. I think we went to 10 and 7, something like that is, is where we went. There's no plan, at least from, from the commissioners, to want to continue to increase prices beyond what they are now. But again, as there's financial pressures on the park, we got to be looking out, you know, how you maximize dollars. It may be uh, raising prices by camping area. We know where the highest usage, all the sites along the lake, and those couple cabins that are right around the hook there also. So in the future, we may need to look at, well, it's not simply you're paying, you know, $10 or whatever it is for a campsite. It might be based upon location you know, a premium location and stuff like that. Again, just things to have in our mind as financial challenges, you know, pop up from here or there. Keep in mind, we have less, we have just over 100 days till uh, opening day, right? Memorial Day is the 31st this year. You open up formally on Saturday, correct? But Friday kind of folks can start Friday. rolling in yep. for camping and stuff like that. And as I think, I know Tom and Dave, I think everyone knows we always have a problem with lifeguards. Um, you had one call already on someone. So again, we would ask your help in advocating and reaching out to folks who might have an interest in you know, being a lifeguard out here at Mock Chunk Lake Park. Dave, as he did last year, will be kind of turning every stone over to find opportunities to get them the training they need if they're not already certified. Uh, for the guys just coming on to the commission, understand that we do reimburse lifeguards for the training and certifications. That's something we started last year. You know, they're going to have to pay it up front, but then we go ahead and, and take care of that. Yeah. Correct? So again, I'm going to ask your help. Uh, Is there anybody repeating uh, this year coming back from last year? Yeah, as far as I know, yeah, they're all they're all interested in, in returning. Yeah, there used to be <laughs> the board members who would be on the board to appoint people. We used to have a lot of people wanting the mm -hmm. job back in the day. But uh, how many do we need total? Uh, we're looking to fill, I believe, six positions. Oh, okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we can reach out to Northern Lehigh. I see their pools closed. Maybe we can get some. Yeah, yeah someone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's yeah. targeting the swimming uh, coaches yeah. and yeah. teachers. Yeah, yeah. That would be yeah. Keep in mind, we have potentially one additional pool opening in Carbon County this summer. All right, we'll see if it materializes, you know, up in Lansford, you know. But again, you know, Nathan, Helen, are and those guys, friends of the pool or something, I know, you know, they're dead set on getting it operational. So that creates both a, a, a challenge and an opportunity. Mm -hmm when it comes to uh, uh, lifeguards in, in regards to that. Uh, Dave, you guys got to start thinking about uh, capacity restrictions again for, for this season. Uh, it actually worked out other than the revenue shortfall, which really wasn't, didn't have anything to do, honestly, with the, the cap that we had on, on beachgoers, but expect to do the same thing, have a, a cap. Now, that would not necessarily uh, be the same way we did it pa this past summer where it was season pass holders, pavilion renters, campers, and county residents, probably just a flat, was it 800? I, I believe it was 400 for the, when it was the, the yellow phase, right. and, and I think it might have been 600, 600. phase. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I've been looking at the Department yeah. of Health website. Yeah, and, okay. You know, trying to get an idea for where we... What where guidance we, they're going to have. What guidance they're going to have, yeah. what the restrictions are going to be as yeah. far as the limitations, whether it's 50% yeah. or 75%. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. You know, it's sub subject to change. Yeah. What yeah. it is now might be a lot different than as we get closer to camping right. season. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, for sure uh, we'll have to, you know, think about it. Yeah. You know. Are we thinking about county residents only again? Is that what? Well, I'll tell you what with county resident, quote unquote county residents only, because other than just in the red phase for a couple weeks, we were never just re county residents, right? Because we always included campers, campers and, you know, yeah. pavilion renters and stuff like that. So I try to break that myth so people don't think we're being exclusive, you know, and not. But what I had asked Dave to, to, to think about is we would like to have the commission consider and look into over the next two months a county resident day. One day a week in which we can kind of, if you're a camper, uh, a pavilion renter, et cetera, or a county resident, that is your day for the beach. Be it, you know, every Wednesday is quote unquote county resident day, right? We would like to ensure we're giving back to the community that is overall has been investing in this park, you know, since 1969 when they're kind of breaking ground for. So we would ask the commission to look about you know, does it make sense that we could have a carbon county day? You know, again, you got to balance revenue generation, right? So, you know, it may be the low income day when it comes to beach and gate access and stuff like that. But we would ask to consider that. But there is no plan to limit to county residents uh, only this year. But we do see a need to, you know, let's give back to our local community and get them excited about Mock Chunk Lake Park. Are you, are you saying that would be a free day for the residents? We would, we would ask the recommendation of the commission. If it were me, tell you what, on that day, I'd let county residents in free. That's just me. You know, again, I, I look at the revenue models, though, because, again, right. you, you, you want to stay as close to your budget as possible. You know? Yeah. So what would you normally get, let's say, on a Wednesday of, of county residents versus you know, out of town. Yeah, yeah well, my, yeah. my uh, thing on promotions like that, you got to be careful, you know, that you just don't get the people coming back and they're not going to join and you're going to do that. So it might be with parameters, yeah. you know, for the month of, yeah. but it's like, I'm thinking like three or four, because yeah. if they come three or four times and don't yeah. see the value. That's the right, way, you know, yeah. So. And, and that is, and, and, and Rick, thank you for hitting on this, because part of this is, trying to get people to come back, try it out, but then they convert into people right. who are going to buy a family membership because you know what? The kids have been here three weeks in a row, and now it's 92 degrees, and it's August, and it's 90% humidity, and they want to come back to the lake. And Dave, you can, you can be up in the booth that day and have them, have them uh, you know, membership. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm you know. kidding you. I'm no, kidding. but the rangers that work the booth do have they, that. They would, they the would do that, yeah. Because yeah. no, yeah. yeah. you want to hit on them. Yeah. So doing. we would ask, yeah, and that, that's great. So we would ask you at least consider that. And then, you know, two months from now when we come back together, if there is a recommendation to move forward, let's go yeah, ahead. And it's newsworthy, say, them. for yeah. the month of July on Monday. It's yeah. Funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Free entry up until we hit our our, our capacity. Yeah, because if you keep it going limit. without perimeters, then people who are paying could get on their, you know. I, I I personally think, and he can tell you, I've been a season pass holder here for longer. Yeah. I can remember. Yeah. And at the price of the season pass, I don't think we should be giving it for free. Yeah. And that's my opinion yeah. there. Even if you charge four or five dollars or three dollars yeah. to yeah. come in, I think that's more than affordable. Yeah. And then the other thing on that is, if you have people from New York in the campground, mm -hmm. you're going to have to allow them to the beach too on that way. We, we do. We, we know. Can't, That's can't. what I said. But I, I don't think it should be for free. Yeah. I, don't, I don't. I will tell you what we found this summer is, Carbon County residents are willing to pay for a quality experience. And that's what they had this past year. Right. No right. one said, I want it free. Matter of fact, most people who came back on social media and called us and, and emailed us said, I would be willing to pay more for the same experience I had this summer. And it was about 
Again, the park wasn't crowded, it wasn't rowdy, it was well controlled, you had physical space. Yeah, uh, to that, you know, to that point, you know, years ago as well, um, that, that little fee that, that we, we charge, I, I think it's extremely reasonable. It Even is. like when Bell spills water would be bad or something, yeah. it protected us from getting the influx sure. and the freebies, just that little yeah. Uh, yeah. price. So, yeah. no, that's, uh, I, I would say, uh, again, and I agree, it's, yeah. it's a steal, but it would be if we did that, um, I would maybe, maybe a promotion or yeah. once, quite no more than three times. Right. Now, again, that, that's up to yeah. you guys to make a recommendation, if any, to us. And that's coming in the future, so. Yeah, so, so tied to that are activities, right? We're trying to create a psychological, a social relationship between Carby County residents and Mock Chunk Lake Park. That is the three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten year olds who are at the park today, eight years from now, they're going to want to be lifeguards, right? So how do you attract those families here? Quite honestly, it's offering them something more than just going to the beach and swimming. That might be like we did last summer with uh, the education center right here, bringing them down. It's about activities that are going to bring in the type of people we want to attract to Mock Chunk Lake Park which is Carbon County residents who, who we're trying to build a relationship with. Because we want to create our own human resource pool of, of lifeguards. I, I spoke to all the lifeguards last year, and they said, you know, kids no longer have a relationship with Mock Jump Lake Park when they're young. They're not up there saying, you know, I want to be a lifeguard in eight years. That's really cool. But we want to create that. And we have to bring those kids in young. It's a medium to long-term plan but we got to start somewhere. So we would ask that the commission looks at what we could, could we do to further enhance, let's call them the extracurricular activities that will bring in folks, locals, uh, back to, to Carbon County, uh, Mock, Mock Chunk Lake Park. Uh, I will say, Dave, there is an opportunity for a free intern uh, through the SLIP program to do as an activities director, social media, the public relations piece. I just need you guys to consider that. You know, we'll work it through Gary Wentz and his office. Uh, that's a free intern to kind of take any good initiative you guys might come up with, take the ball and run with it. So Did you have interns before? They were... No, we haven't had interns. Sure. We had, a, we had uh, somebody who was working yeah, it was kind of like an internship, but he wasn't like an activities coordinator. This, I think, I think the focus is having this person just so focus solely on. Yeah, on yeah. yeah. so you know, because we don't want to put an additional burden on the existing uh, staff, right, right? Right. We have we have an opportunity for a paid intern, a college kid to come in at eleven, twelve bucks an hour, or whatever yeah. the split I think program would awesome take, idea. and yeah. let them run with it. Is, yeah, this, look, is this an ad hoc uh, opportunity, or could this be uh, consistent? It, well, every year the SLIP program's there. The county uses it every year, okay. right? But just for something to count on if we, you know. It, and, and it is. I mean, as long as, you know, Gary and before him, Sedlin and stuff, they used it every, every year, you know, for different county offices. The commissioners always have someone who comes in as part of the program. And again, all it takes... Our investment is mentoring ship right. and you know leadership to direct that person uh, again you know so again if there's an interest again two meetings from now we need to have a firm decision boom and we'll get that uh, uh, documentation out to you all and, and we can move ahead with that and is that, is that through workforce training the, the slip program well or? it through through workforce development Yes. Okay. Through that part. It's simple two forms that have to be filled out. They're like three or four pages long. Uh, let me see. Matter of fact, I think I might. Yeah, I we, we get usually get summer of help for the maintenance staff through this program. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. So again, that's there it is. But uh, uh, Gary Wentz can provide the details on that. Lastly, park expansion. Uh, you may not have seen the commissioner's meeting. Would have been oh two weeks ago. Uh, we're contract, let's say contracting with the Conservancy and a couple other organizations to begin looking at how we can get funding and what options are out there 
to increase our, let's say, easements in regard to agricultural land and open space. And part of that is, you know, how do we continue to increase and protect Mock Chunk Lake Park? And part of that is, is buying property, all right? So there's a significant study that we'll be starting here in the next couple of months to help us figure out, you know, how we can go ahead and do that. So I'd ask you just be considerate of that. When you see, you know, the farm across the street's up for sale, right, we need to be thinking about, you know, what is the possibility and does that fit the vision for Mock Chunk Lake Park? And again, continuing to protect the watershed and stuff like that. But we're going to push that really hard. Uh, the county's going to have some additional money, quote unquote, for economic development we expect will be coming in. Uh, we believe that we can use some of that fund, economic development fund, as kind of preservation support efforts because we have a significant return on investment of our natural environment, right? That's what attracts people here, that builds the economy in, in Cargan County. So just be uh, conscientious of that coming down, you know, over uh, probably the next six to nine months as that study uh, takes place. All right, that's all I have for now. That's all? Yep. Yeah, yeah, I kind of. It's been long. like three months, though, since we've talked, you know, so. It's pent-up energy. Yeah, it is. Out. Yeah.